Uh, I'm Chiu Yi. Um, I'm going to present a uh, non-parametric estimation of exchangeable random graph models. Uh, this is a joint work with my uh, colleague Justin and my advisor Edo. So uh, first I will explain the interesting exchangeable random graph model and then talk about how to estimate uh, and given the observation. Okay, so uh, to clear, uh, clarify the terminology here, um, I suppose uh, my graphical model is network model, which is different from the previous talks. Um, so what we are interested to know is the um, network structure, uh, which uh, applications through uh, have uh, uh, widely been used in genomics, social uh, interactions, or internet activities. Uh, a big example is the Facebook network, uh, which show here as the uh, cute plot uh, of my Facebook network as a, a, a small subnet of the huge um, large network uh, where each node denote uh, a person and the edge is the uh, friendship between people. Uh, inter uh, interesting statistical questions uh, involve uh, that uh, how are people connected or um, how are the edges uh, generated? Um, so um, basically we want to explain the interactions as a, a probability process and um, an exchangeable graph model is, is one of the models that explains such interactions. Uh, so here is the exchangeable uh, graph model. Um, the network is specified by the adjacency matrix where uh, A, I, J equals one means node I and J are connected uh, and equals zero if they are not connected. And the exchangeable graph model uh, um, is, uh, gives a way to generate such adjacency matrix by um, specify the uh, first, um, okay, so, uh, the exchangeable graph model is parameterized by the graph on W, which is a bivariate function from zero one square to uh, the to a probability between zero and one. Uh, to generate the uh, the network, first uh, you generate an IID uh, uniform random variables U I U one through U n, and conditional on the latent variables and the graph on and the um, the adjacency uh, matrix A is uh, just independent Bernoulli uh, W U I U J. So uh, the plot is a quadratic graph form which we will use in later um, simulation. Basically, uh, here W uh, represents the probability that two nodes are connected given their latent variables. And the, the latent variables is um, something that if you assume the continuity of uh, the graph form, uh, the label uh, measures how close nodes are given. Um, so basically, the closer the latent variables u i and u j, the more similar the structure of node i and j. Um, this is a, a logistic graph form which uh, uh, is used in many uh, models um, and the small three by three adjacency matrix is specified by the grid uh, probability. So why are we interested in uh, exchangeable graph model? Um, so the keyword exchangeability means that um, the probability of the graph uh, of the network is invariant under node permutation. Uh, which means uh, we don't distinguish nodes uh, um, uh, by their labels. Um, it provides some mathematical conveniency. Uh, we will see later. Um, it, it exchangeable graph model is a very general model which uh, extends uh, like the basic Erdo Rani model, block model, uh, random dot product model. Um, and it's also closely related to latent position model. Um, anyway, it's just very general. Um, the key advantage of, th of this model is that um, 
it has a prob uh, it has a property called projectivity. Um, projectivity means that um, the parameters you estimate from a um, from a subset of network is um, is the same as from a whole network. Um, generally, what we uh, what we have in a real data set is we don't have the whole uh, ob uh, network observation. We usually have only the subset of the uh, uh, whole network. And um, EXGM is good that um, if you only have the subnet, it is OK. You can uh, estimate the parameters, and it is uh, correct, even for the larger network. But uh, actually, this is a, a rare um, a property that it, sh it is shown that other popular uh, network models like scale-free network and uh, exponential net, uh, graph model uh, does not have. OK, so um, theoretically, uh, EXGM is uh, good. Um, but uh, how does it explain a uh, real network? So the first um, step is to estimate the, the, the um, EXGM. So uh, how to estimate the uh, model? Uh, basically, uh, we estimate the graph on which parameterize the, the, the model. Uh, in literature, people usually just estimate the, the probability matrix, which is the, um, which is the matrix uh, given the probability that uh, each pair of nodes are connected. And here we move uh, further to estimate the graph on, which uh, also consists estimate the latent variable uh, u and uh, then estimate the graph on w. Um, so what we do is uh, first to uh, specify uh, the uh, estimate, which uh, is not uh, a trivial problem because um, graphons are not unique. Um, and the second step is to propose some estimation steps to to actually estimate the graphon. And finally, uh, we show a particular procedure is um, correctly estimate the graphon, and it is uh, applied to hypothesis testing to show why such estimation is useful. OK, so first, um, I use the identifiability of the graphon. Um, graphons are not unique um, because multiple graphons may generate the same uh, exchangeable graph model. Uh, like shown in the example, um, the two uh, uh, functional form uh, of graphon actually generate the same model, but we cannot easily tell by eye. Um, more generally, um, given a measure preserving function phi on, on the uh, latent variable u, uh, w, u, v, and w, phi, u, and phi, v will generate the same um, exchangeable graph model. So actually, there are infinitely many uh, um, parametric uh, ways to generate the same model. So if we, are, we, we do inference, um, which one do we estimate? This is the problem. So in literature, uh, Biko and Chen uh, uh, introduced uh, something called a canonical graphon. Uh, to say that uh, this one is the one that represents all the graphons that generate the same uh, uh, EXGM. So uh, canonical graphon is uh, is the particular uh, functional form that satisfies uh, the degree distribution um, is uh, monotone, uh, non-decreasing on zero, uh, one interval. Um, but this is uh, even under uh, such um, a situation, our estimate will uh, not be uniquely uh, determined. So we add another restriction that uh, called a degree identifiable condition, which we ask um, the random um, random variable uh, u uh, put into the uh, graphon and uh, degree um, distribution will be 
absolute continuous um, and under, under the degree identifiable condition, then the graph on W has a unique canonical form. Um, this means uh, when we restrict the uh, exchangeable model to this uh, degree identifiable model, uh, the graph on W and a subclass of uh, uh, EXGM are uh, in one-to-one -one correspondence. So we look at the data and we can identify the unique graph on we want to we are interested to know. Okay, so now I talk about how to actually estimate the graph on. So um, it is uh, intuitively very simple. So first we, we do the uh, um, ma probability matrix estimation, um, which gives uh, the underlying um, uh, probability to generate the adjacency matrix. And then uh, we estimate the latent variables uh, u, i, and combined with the <coughs> matrix estimation, we have a um, um, grid uh, a graph on estimation on the on, on the latent variables, and we can um, embed such conditional uh, probability to the um, zero one square to actually get the graph on estimate. Uh, called W hat U um, comma V. And the final step uh, is a smoothing step, which may be uh, helpful um, when you have a prior knowledge about uh, how the graph may look like, especially how smooth it is. And this is a general way to estimate the graph and different uh, methods in each step can, can be combined to form uh, an estimate. So for, uh, for the matrix estimation, there are a lot of methods, uh, especially uh, people like to use a block model to approximate the, uh, the, matri uh, the probability matrix. Uh, methods uh, such like uh, likelihood approach, moment matching, and spectral clustering are all good under some condition. Um, but we, uh, we here focus on a new uh, method proposed by Chatterjee uh, called uh, universal singular value thresholding. It is a much simpler model that it basically does uh, SVD and then use the first few uh, eigenvectors to approximate the uh, probability matrix. Um, and the unique thing is that the threshold is determined by the size of the network and just under very mild conditions, uh, it is shown that such estimate is uh, um, consistent uh, when you look at the uh, mean square error. And the second and third step of uh, estimating the graph uh, is like this. So the second step is to estimate the latent variable and Based on our definition of the um, canonical graph, uh, the latent variable is uh, identified by the degree distribution. Um, and, and there are two very uh, intuitive ways to estimate the degree distribution. I mean, uh, latent variables and degree dis um, the degree distribution preserves the order of latent variables, so in that way we can uh, identify the latent variable from the degree distribution. And to estimate, because we don't see the degree distribution, we can only estimate it. And there are two ways to estimate the um, degree distribution. The first is to approximate it by the adjacency matrix, which is the empirical degree distribution. Um, and the second way is to um, estimate it from the uh, probability estimation matrix uh, p hat, um, where is uh, where it comes from the first step. We don't know which one works better, uh, so we did some simulation, and actually the two estimations give uh, similar errors. We we will see in the next slide. And for the third step, uh, there are many algorithms can do uh, smoothing on a. Uh, on a grid, um, um, and uh, here we only consider the 
uh, total variation minimization algorithm, which uh, among a bunch of uh, standard algorithms, this is the best, uh, give the best performance. So here is the uh, simulation result that uh, we test uh, for uh, quadratic graphon and logistic graphon. Um, we uh, basically test different combination of the uh, uh, and methods in each step. Uh, for example, in step one, we consider uh, either directly use the adjacency <coughs> matrix A or use the um, USBT method proposed by Chatterjee. Um, step two, we, we consider using empirical degree by A and uh, by probability matrix P hat. And step three, we consider either a smoothing or no smoothing. And uh, the result I show for the different combinations, we can see uh, um, uh, only uh, the first uh, naive method uh, does not have a uh, decreasing mean square <coughs> error, and all the other methods are good. Uh, and the difference between using uh, empirical distribution by adjacency matrix and by uh, probability matrix is, uh, uh, is very small. Uh, and because the uh, smoothness of our uh, underlying graph on the uh, smoothing um, part uh, gives uh, reduced the error a lot. To make the problem simple, we, uh, we focus on the uh, this combination, which used the Chatterjee's probability matrix estimation combined with the uh, latent variable estimation from just the adjacency matrix A, and uh, we see under mild condition, it can correctly uh, estimate the graph on in the sense that um, the uh, mean square error goes, goes to zero if you have uh, more and more observation. Um, is this uh, useful in uh, in practice? So we we have uh, generated some uh, synthetic uh, hypothesis hypothesis testing examples. Um, so the problem is, um, if you if you have uh, observed adjacency uh, matrix A, uh, can you tell whether it is from some um, um, exchangeable graph model <laughs> specified? Uh, as the null hypothesis. And here we test whether uh, the observation is from um, from a quadratic graph on specified as the form like this. And the alternative is uh, it's not like this. Um, so the test statistic is basically we, es we estimate the, the gr a graph on uh, from the observation and then to see if the difference is small enough. If it is small, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. Um, and although we cannot obtain the um, distribution of the test statistics, we can sample um, we can sample uh, a bunch of um, uh, uh, observation and get an empirical distribution of the test statistics. And this is what is shown in the plot. Um, the red line is the rejection um, place where if you observed um, test statistics is larger than 0 0.013, then you reject the null and say uh, the graph on, uh, uh, the observation is not from the specific graph on. And the next example is um, to test the comp composite hypothesis uh, hypothesis that um, the null distribution is specified by a parametric form of the uh, graphon, which now uh, here is a logistic graphon uh, with A range from um, minus 5 to 5 and B range from 0 to 5. And the alternative is uh, it's not in that form. And Again, we, use, uh, we, we look at the difference between the uh, estimate of the observed um, um, network and uh, the underlying graph on. But here we uh, mi minimize the, um, the difference by ranging A and B in the specified re uh, region. This 
this is much like um, uh, finding the smallest distance from the observed uh, uh, estimate and the the underlying uh, space uh, by the generate by the family of uh, graphons in now uh, hypo uh, hypothesis. And again, we can uh, ob obtain the empirical uh, distribution of test statistics by uh, sampling. And we can reject our uh, null uh, based on the uh, sampling distribution. So uh, here's uh, a few remarks on, on the work. So exchangeable graph model is the Limiting distribution counting the number of copies of subgraphs. Um, it is two-dimensional uh, analogy to the uh, exchangeable uh, sequences. This is the main uh, theoretical um, result of, uh, of this model, uh, which uh, is important in the sense that um, it specifies this uh, function uh, graph form as the limiting uh, distribution of actually counting um, the number of copies uh, of uh, the uh, network structure. And the second uh, remark is that uh, it is the exchangeability uh, uh, caused the non-unique graph form representation which is fine in a generative uh, probability model, but it raises an uh, estimation problem in, in the uh, backward inference. Um, and the third uh, mark is that uh, the simple uh, USVTA method provides a very fast and consistent estimate of the graph form, which may be useful. And um, and the graphon estimation is a small step further from the probability matrix estimation, provides some flexible tools uh, such as hypothesis testing. And there are some uh, interesting questions where uh, we hope to answer, um, which is not solved yet. Um, the first is, um, now the latent variable estimation using the degree distribution is uh, is sort of sim uh, simple um, and does not utilize all the information in the observation. Can we uh, have better uh, solution? And the second is um, how can we do model checking for uh, exchangeable graph model? And the third is um, compared to um, the favorable uh, network model, block model, um, exchangeable graph model is much more flexible. But uh, as the graph on W can take any uh, functional form, uh, is it too flexible that uh, without regulation, uh, um, it, um, it is hard to um, specify? And the, the fourth uh, uh, question is, um, Exchangeable graph model is uh, actually capable of dealing with multiple network observations um, because of the projectivity I have mentioned before. Um, but how to infer the graph form uh, if we have multiple uh, observations? Uh, just uh, naively taking average is not is not the way to go. So. Uh, in, in general, uh, I think uh, this is a very interesting, promising model to work with, and there are um, not many uh, literature on, on on this part, and um, hopefully there will be more work on it. Thank you. Questions? If you actually compare this with exponential random graph models, let's say you would consider like a transitive uh, model with uh, transitive um, properties. So how how far apart from zero would the transitivity parameter would have to be so that you can distinguish between this model, whether the data would be generated by this kind of exchangeable 
model, like you say, or then the exponential random graph model. But have you kind of compared the um, situation? I, I haven't. Okay. Have you considered a, like a dynamic version of this exchangeable model class? I don't think uh, exchangeable model now fit the, the the dynamic network because you say it's dynamic, then you have a certain sequence of the node um, labels. They are not actually it per, per, um, the probability is not actually invariant under permutation. No, but I was more thinking in terms of um, there is the definite the generalization of definite theorem for Markov chains. Uh, so by Diaconis and Friedman, whether there was like a com comparable generalization of this exchangeability for dynamic network models, that's kind of an interesting question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Thank you for asking. Any more questions? No? Um, so you, you model the interaction between I and J by the graph. Uh, can one consider more than two-way interaction? Can you go to high interaction? Does that make any sense? Um, what do you mean by high interaction? Well, looking at the IJK. Um, usually network uh, is specified by nodes and edges and higher order interaction is based on the edge, um, based on the uh, structure of the edges. And, and the probability on edges will uh, uh, induce the probability on higher order uh, structure. Thank you.